In actual buildings, test and balance professionals adjust the distribution of airflow to rooms within an HVAC zone. In Apache HVAC, this balancing is accomplished with the zone airflow distribution table. In this example, I've set up two systems. System 1 is a variable air volume air handling unit serving terminal units with reheat. This air handling unit serves four HVAC zones and each of those zones contains multiple spaces. System 2 has a dedicated outside air system and fan coil units to serve the zones. There are four zones served by System 2. Two of them are one-to-one -one zones and two of them are zones serving multiple spaces. There are three different ways to access the zone airflow distribution table from Apache HVAC. The first option is to click the button in the Apache HVAC toolbar. When I access the zone airflow distribution table using the button in the Apache HVAC toolbar, I can see all of the systems within the HVAC file in the table. The initial view in the table when accessed from the button shows all system branches on the tree collapsed. So if I come over here to the left, I can see my system one, that's my VAV air handling unit, and my system two, which is my DOAS with fan coil units. And if I use the plus sign, I can expand these systems to show the zones that are served by the system. You might have noticed when I clicked on the plus signs that the table on the right also expanded to show the zones. The same thing happens if I expand the zones to show the spaces contained within them. The initial view of the zone airflow distribution table changes depending upon how I access it. So if I look at the second way to access the second way to access the zone airflow distribution table is through the button on the system parameters dialog. When I access the table from this button, I see only the system that was open in the system parameters dialog. So since I opened my system one, my VAV air handling unit, I see only my system one in this table. The third way I can access the zone airflow distribution table is by double clicking in the zone component in the air side of my Apache HVAC network. When I double click on the zone component, I see all of the systems in my Apache HVAC file, but my system and zone are expanded specific to the zone component that I accessed from the network. So I double clicked on the zone component in my system one, which is why I see air handling unit one expanded. And my display layer when I did so was my first layer, my first floor classrooms west zone, which is why I see only that one zone expanded to show the spaces contained within it. When I'm looking at the zone airflow distribution table, I notice that some of the text is in different colors. The green values that you see here in this table are auto-sized values. Uh, specifically in this example, I've run the room loads for this project, but I have not yet run the system loads. Accordingly, you can see the peak heating and cooling load for each of these spaces and zones in that green auto-sized text. But by contrast, if you look at the cooling and heating loads for the system, you'll see that text is light blue. Light blue values are derived and they will be auto-sized unless the user unchecks the auto-size room percentage checkbox. As we continue talking about this dialog, you'll sometimes see this green or blue text turn to black. That means it's no longer going to auto-size. If you see text turn orange, that indicates a local edit has been made. In addition to the text color, the color of the cells that contains the text gives you a visual clue as to where you should be making edits. So the values in the white or light colored cells are editable. The rest of the darker shaded cells are derived values or auto-sized values that are not for editing in this dialog. There are columns in the zone airflow distribution table for cooling load, cooling airflow percentage, and cooling airflow volume, as well as for heating load, heating airflow percentage, and heating airflow volume. The cooling load and the heating load are the peak load for each of the spaces and zones shown within the table. The cooling airflow percentage is the percentage of the total air supplied to the zone that is distributed to each of the spaces within the zone. When auto-sized, this cooling airflow percentage is distributed based upon the proportional load of the spaces within the zone. For example, if I look at my first floor classroom's west zone, I see that classroom 2 has a slightly larger peak cooling load than classroom 1. Likewise, it receives nearly 52% of the cooling airflow, whereas classroom 1 receives only slightly more than 48%. The cooling airflow volume column shows the actual quantity of airflow being distributed both to the zone as well as to the spaces within that zone. 
If I want to change the distribution of airflow to the spaces within the zone, I can do so by double clicking and making edits to these numbers. So if I don't want 1,493 CFM to be delivered to classroom one, I can change that, for example, to 1,400. Now, when I do, you see that 1,400 is in orange. That's that local edit value described earlier. You'll also notice that that 96.98% text has turned red. This text has turned red because it doesn't add up to 100% and it's not within range of 100%. So what I mean is if the sum of the airflow to all of the spaces within a zone is not 100% of the airflow supplied to that zone, you'll see this text show up in some shade of red. Now there is a tolerance here, you don't have to be exactly 100%. If I change the airflow to classroom 2 to say 1640, I see that cooling airflow percentage is displaying as 100% but that the text is in light red. So this is indicating to me that I'm more than half a percent off of 100% but within 2%. So if I were outside of 2%, if I were less than 98 or greater than 102% of my zone airflow, I would see this number in that darker red color that we saw before, which is indicating to me that I need to do something, I need to rebalance my airflow in my spaces in order to get closer to 100%. Once I'm within range between 98 and 102%, I'm allowed to proceed, it's just warning me that the value here is more than half a percent off of 100. Now if you get within half a percent, say I bump this to 1690, I see it displayed as 100%. So when I'm within plus or minus 0.5% of that perfect 100, the software is just rounding to 100% and showing me that text in black again. To make this exact, I'll go ahead and change my value to 1694. If I wanted to edit the airflow to the zone, that's this 3094 CFM in my example, that needs to be done outside of this table. So this table is just for distributing the airflow to the zone among the spaces contained within that zone. To actually make changes to the heating or cooling airflow supplied to the zone, you'll need to use the override options for cooling and heating design airflows on the zone loads and supply airflows tab in the system parameters dialog. Now that I've made some manual changes to the airflow distribution within this zone, I want to pay attention to this auto size room percentage checkbox. As I mentioned before, this heating and cooling airflow percentage was auto size based upon the relative load of the spaces within the zone. I've changed that distribution now. I'm no longer at that 48, 52% balance. I'm closer to 45, 55% balance. So likewise, I want to uncheck this box. Now, as soon as I uncheck that box, those light blue airflow percentage distribution numbers have become black. So that's indicating to me that these are not going to auto size when I run my system loads. Or if I went back and redid my room sizing, this distribution is not going to change. These manual edits that I have entered here will be retained. You may have noticed when my zone is expanded to show the spaces contained within it that it's also indicating which of those spaces is the master space within that zone. So which of these spaces contains the thermostat that controls the behavior of the zone? So in my example, classroom one is the master. I can change that without having to leave this table and I can do so with this master room checkbox. So if I check the box for classroom two, classroom two has now become the master zone and the box for classroom one is unchecked and available for my use. If I save this table, I can see the change reflected in my HVAC zones and zone groups browser view. So if I expand my Air Handling Unit 1 system, I look at that first floor Classrooms West zone that we were just using as an example, I can now see that L1 Classroom 2 is my master zone, as indicated by the little red M on the symbol. So let's take a closer look at System 2. I'm going to switch back into HVAC component mode so I can make edits to my HVAC network. I haven't made any changes, so I'm going to continue without saving. I will allow it to check zone assignments for consistency, and no discrepancies were found because I didn't make any changes when I entered that HVAC zone and zone groups view mode. So taking a closer look at system two, I've got a dedicated outside air system serving my zones as well as fan coil units to provide the conditioning. 
Likewise, I might want to create a dual inlet zone. So to do that, I'll double click on the junction upstream of the zone component in my HVAC network. In this junction dialog, I have a checkbox to merge into HVAC zone, so to create a dual inlet zone. And I have two options here for a top ventilation input and a left ventilation input. For this prototype system that I'm using in this example, the top ventilation is going to make the most sense because my ventilation air is coming from the top and my recirculated path through my fan coil unit is coming from the left. If your configuration in your HVAC network is different, you'll want to use the left ventilation input. So I click OK and now I can see that I've created a dual inlet zone. That blue V confirms which path the software is identifying as the ventilation path. And since I selected top, that's this branch here. So why make this dual inlet? This dual inlet supports the distribution of ventilation air to spaces within a zone when that distribution needs to be different than the distribution of heating and cooling airflow from the fan coil unit in this example. So in other words, I'm only going to use this dual inlet when the actual ventilation air will be separately ducted into the spaces within a zone and not combined with the air for space conditioning. As a result of adding this dual inlet, if I go back to my zone airflow distribution table, I see that I have two new columns, ventilation airflow percentage and ventilation airflow volume. Looking at system two, in the example zone I've called first floor admin, I have two spaces, the office and the lobby. This zone receives 75 CFM of ventilation air, and right now 37 CFM is going to the office and 39 CFM is going to the lobby. Now I mentioned before that my heating and cooling airflow percentages were distributed based on the relative load of the space within the zone. Ventilation's a bit different. My ventilation airflow is distributed based upon the relative floor areas. So if I look over at my heating load here, I can see that I've got a slightly larger heating load in this lobby than the office. And likewise, I have a slightly larger um, percentage of the airflow serving this zone supplied to the lobby than the office. My lobby is bigger in floor area than my office, but this distribution is slightly different if you look at those decimal places. And that's a result of this distribution calculation depending upon the floor area instead of the peak load. Just like with the cooling and heating airflow distribution, I can change the ventilation distribution manually, and I can do that either, either by editing the airflow or by editing the percentages. So I can make this an even 50-50 distribution of ventilation air. There are a few dialogues within Apache HVAC that I can access from the zone airflow distribution table without having to leave this window. So if I select my system two, my buttons become available here at the bottom, and I can edit the multiplex. So this gives me the same dialog that can be accessed if I double click on the green header bar for the shaded area representing the multiplex in my air side network. I can make any changes here that I would there to my multiplex without actually needing to leave the zone airflow distribution table to get there. I also have a button in the zone airflow distribution table for, called room unit edit. When I open this room unit edit, I see all of the spaces, all of the rooms served by my system. So for example, at the top, I see my office space and my lobby space. These are two spaces within the first floor admin zone, which is why I see this zone layer one listed twice here, because that's the one zone with two spaces contained within it. I can choose which of these spaces I would like to edit using the check boxes here on the left. And now the buttons down below allow me to edit any common parameters or settings for radiators, baseboard heaters, or chilled panels for all of the rooms selected using the checkboxes. So if I add a radiator to these selected spaces, I'm going to OK the default settings. And now when I come in to edit that radiator, I see options at the bottom that are OK and OK and copy all. Whenever multiple rooms are selected, as in this example, making an edit in this room unit controller dialog that I have open and simply clicking OK will copy the newly edited values to the corresponding room units in all other rooms selected. If I click OK and copy all, it will copy all of the newly edited values and all of the other values in this dialog to the room units in the other rooms selected.
The only way to truly edit a room unit for a single room is to select only that particular room before clicking the edit button and opening this room unit controller dialog. Otherwise, when I click OK, at the very minimum, I'm copying that edited value to all of the other room units I have in the selected rooms. We recommend using the room component in your Apache HVAC AirSight network if you have large numbers of these room units in lieu of the zone component. When I use the zone component, I'm going to come in here and make edits to spaces within that zone using this dialog. If I use the room component, I've got considerably more flexibility to make global edits to large numbers of units at a time. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions about the zone airflow distribution table or any of the other features in the virtual environment, please don't hesitate to contact us in support at support at IESVE.com. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.